He's the former president and publisher of the Sun Herald, and now he's on the radio. Welcome to Coast View with Ricky Matthews on Super Talk Mississippi Gulf Coast 103.1. Welcome to Coast View, the show that celebrates the men and women who are making coastal Mississippi a, a better place to live, work, and play. So here we are. We dodged Marco, and you know, you know, we, uh, we know we know from experience what we have to do is just keep paying attention to the tropics. It'll be a busy year. We already know that. A lot of us have had sleepless nights. But just hang in there and stay prepared. That's the best advice we can give you. Um, we're gonna we're gonna have a terrific uh, show today. We're gonna have Ann Petrie from the Hancock County Chamber of Commerce in the first half of the show, and Dr. Nicholas Conger, our friend, the infectious disease doctor from Memorial Hospital, on the second half of the show. So, Kyle, let's bring Ann on in and uh, say good morning. How you doing, Ann? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me on, Ricky. It's great to have you. You're the marketing manager for the for the uh, chamber, and uh, you're you're pinch hitting for Tish Williams, who had an emergency. And Tish is such a good friend, and I really appreciate you being willing to come on in and 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 play your role as Tish today. Well, I appreciate it. She's a tough act to follow, but I'll do my best. Yeah, she's. Uh, we had an extended coast view session with Tish, and you know we go back a long way. You know, before Katrina, after Katrina. And then, uh, you know, the, the, you know, there's probably not a, a better, bigger ambassador for Hancock County and coastal Mississippi than Tish. She's, she's just a really good friend. But I'm looking forward to talking to you. You're, you're a Southern Miss graduate, right? I am. I earned my MBA in 2018, right well, here on the coast. You. And you, uh, you went to, didn't you go to Ole Miss too? I'm trying to remember. I did. I, yeah. uh, I studied international studies there at the Croft Institute. Um, my lifelong dream was to be a foreign service officer, but I was studying abroad when Hurricane Katrina hit. And so I shifted course and went from global to local and I haven't looked back. You're reading about you French, right? French was your French. language. Were you in France? I was in France. I spent two yeah. years abroad. I spent one year studying in Montpellier, which is the very center of the Mediterranean coast. And then I went back and taught for a year in Blois, which is in the Loire Valley. It's about an hour, hour and a half southwest of Paris. That's so interesting because when you travel the world, and we talk about this all the time, it not only does it give you a perspective, but it also gives you a wonderful perspective about coastal Mississippi and how it fits into the world, doesn't it? Does. It? it does. It does. I, my son Justin is a world traveler. He's uh, he works for Price Waterhouse in New York. He spent um, some time in Spain learning learning uh, Spanish. He's been all you know Ireland and all over you know France and you know England and Equator and Peru and up the Amazon. I mean he's been a, he's he's he loves home, <laughs> but he <laughs> the more he sees the world, the more he wants to see more of it. I, I expect him actually to end up over in Europe, you know, working for Price Waterhouse at some point, because he really wants to do the international piece. Sounds like that was really high on your list at one point. It was, but once I actually got out into the field and started traveling a little bit, it's like you said, I did realize South Mississippi's role and how it fits into the rest of the world. And you can actually do international business from right here at home. It's something we do every day. Well, um, we talk about it on the show. I mean, this, you know, this, this ability to, to operate remotely, this ability to touch the rest of the world, technology has really enabled it. The stock market continues to climb. A lot of that's on the backs of technology stocks that are performing really well. And in a lot of ways, our life's never going to be go back to where it was. We found new ways to use technology to be more efficient and more effective. And while we will, you know, face-to-face -face is important, technology is going to play a big role in our lives from this point forward, don't you think? 100%. I actually, I've been doing some research on industry specific resources we can bring back to our members. And I started listening to this new podcast over the weekend called The Boutique Hub. And the first episode, the first guest I listened to was a small business owner from Connecticut. And she was basically just telling her story about how she took a small business from brick and mortar and completely did an overhaul and took it online while they were under lockdown. And now she's back open in the brick and mortar with both options. So I think that the pandemic, it did 
put us in a fast forward mode. You know, if you were thinking about e-commerce, if you were thinking about social selling, um, basically integrating any type of technology in your business, it pretty much puts you on the fast track to learning that. Myself well, included. Yeah, no, I agree. I agree completely. And the, the reality is, and we talk about on the show all the time that any trend that was in place prior to the pandemic, the pandemic just sped them up. You know, if it was, you know, major retail was struggling. So, you know, not so good as it relates to major retail. I think a, a refocus on local retail and local businesses and the role they play in our communities, I think that's a, a big reminder. The opportunity to use technology in ways. My goodness, I mean, technology's just changed as as as, as we we knew it was changing us. But man, you, it just forced us to be innovative. It forced us to to find new ways to do business. And the the, the business that you cited a few minutes ago, you know, they go back. They'll come out of the pandemic with a strong local, you know, business, and and then you know they're open to the world now. Exactly, exactly. You know, I've always been a big proponent of Main Street businesses because they do so much to shape the culture and the character of a community. But having an online presence is the one tool that you can leverage to have a global presence. So it's definitely going to open up a lot of doors. Well, what I'll, I, I, as you know, I stay in touch with chamber leaders across the coast because you're really in touch with local business. And you know, you you guys can be you know psychologists, and you can be enablers. You can be you do a lot of listening, because you know the truth is these are difficult times for small business, and the chamber's there to kind of try to figure out okay now where where can we help them? You know where where is there a gap we can help them fill? Is there is there an ear we can lend to them just to listen to their situation? Because this is a time where you have to be tenacious, you have to be doggedly determined to stay in business. And 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 keep an eye on the horizon that you're you're gonna you're we're gonna get through this. We we've gotten through difficult times before. This one's tough because it's, it's so it's such an extended amount of time. But the chamber's there to sort of kind of keep be the glue that keeps all this you know moving. You see it that way. One hundred percent. You know, um, we're we'll talk about our leadership program a little bit later, hopefully. But um, I was looking back over the seven habits of highly effective people. Uh, over the weekend. And my favorite one is, I can't remember which number it is in that list of the seven, but it's seek first to understand, then to be understood. Um, it resonates with me because it's also a part of one of my favorite prayers, the prayer to St. Francis. Um, but it says a lot about what we do at the chamber. You know, we before we can deliver our message effectively, we have to know where our members are, where they're struggling, where they're strong, what we can do to help, how can we tailor our practices to meet their needs. It's really yeah. at the heart of being a good leader, too. You know, it's it is having the heart of a servant so that you can lift all of those ships in that rising tide. Empathy. Empathy is one 100%. of the most important human characteristics there is, especially in a leadership role. You know, the ability to walk a mile in another person's shoe and understand their situation. You know, we're lucky. You know, I talk about it almost every show, but I mean, there, there are a thousand points of light all over coastal Mississippi that are have that servant heart that are doing things to help this community, reaching out to neighbors. And a lot, of, a lot of that is, you know, Tish talks about this all the time, but this whole notion of resiliency and how that's part of our DNA. And, and to some extent, you know, as I know it's, if you're a business that's struggling right now, it's hard to hear what I'm about to say and feel great about it. But the reality is because we've been in tough situations before, you know, we know what it's like to dig deep and get through it again. And hopefully we can stay focused on that and use which to some extent is a competitive advantage. Other 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 communities that have not faced the kind of disasters that we have had to face may not be able to dig as deep as we can dig and may not know how to help each other the way we know how to help each other. Um, real opportunities for us, don't you think? 100% agree with you on that one. I was having that conversation with someone yesterday. You know, we are going through the challenges that we've faced. It does build your character. It really forces you to reach inside and get to that deepest, darkest place and that 
place of determination. You know, we're not ones to shrink from challenges around here um, and our willingness to support each other even as we're struggling. Is well, so one of, the, one of the messages is that if someone's a, um, a small business or even a business for that matter that, who is not involved in their local chamber, this is a real good opportunity to think about it because you may sort of feel alone right now. You, for, for, for a matter of fact, you may need some help understanding like, like the state grant programs or there may be other programs that are available to you. The chamber is kind of up to speed on all of this, and they can help you sort of work through it. They, they know what other businesses are going through, so they, there may be something they've heard from someone else that will help you in your business. So this is the time to kind of all come together. So if you're a business and you're not involved in the chamber and you feel like you're alone, you're not alone, and you have a real opportunity to sort of join in with the others and you know find that way to dig deep to keep your business at least healthy as possible so that when we emerge on the other side, we can keep, you know, there's a business still there to manage. So um, that, I have that, that pretty continuous message. Um, we're, uh, we're coming to the end of this segment, but when we come back, I want to talk about the leadership program that you guys have done. And, you know, again, you still, even in the pandemic, you still have to be focused on developing leaders. I'll talk, you know, what's the latest on your ambassador program. There are a few other items that I want to, I want to chat with you, but we'll be, we'll be back after this break with Ann Petrie from the Hancock County Chamber of Commerce. Get out of the house and over to Big Play today. Two massive arcades, bowling, go-karts, two mini golf courses, a two-story state-of-the-art laser tag arena, bumper cars, and right now get a $50 game card for only $25. Visit our station's Facebook and print on demand so you can play at Big Play Entertainment Center now. These deals won't last long, so make sure you get your half-off deal. Big Play Entertainment Center, Highway 90, Biloxi. Bowl, play, eat. Go to our station's Facebook to get your half-off deal now. What decisions are being made by state lawmakers, and how will they affect you, your family, and community? If you listen, if you listen, you'll know. Super Talk Mississippi, the Super Talk app, and at supertalk.fl. Hi, I'm Billy Kinder, host of Big Billy Kinder Outdoors. Here, the show Saturdays at 1, right here on Super Talk Mississippi. Turkeys, whitetail, Grenada Lake crappie, or Gulfport redfish. We enjoy it all, especially when you're in camp with us on Super Talk Mississippi. You could be spreading the coronavirus without realizing you have it. So do your part and stay home. It's important to limit in-person interaction with anyone outside of your immediate household, but phone and video chat are safe ways to connect. It's also important to limit social gatherings. If you need essential items like food and medicine, try using a delivery service. If you must leave your house for essential items or if you wanna take a walk for exercise, make sure to wear a cloth face covering. Stay at least six feet away from other people. Try not to touch frequently touch surfaces like light signals, street signs, or benches. And wash your hands with soap and water for at least 20 seconds as often as possible. This advice applies to people of any age, including teens and younger adults. It takes all of us to slow the spread of the coronavirus. So stay home unless absolutely necessary. Visit coronavirus.gov for the latest information. Thousands of Bulldog fans have subscribed to the Thunder and Lightning podcast. Have you? On each episode, Brian Haydad and Joel Coleman give you an inside look at your Mississippi State Bulldogs. The Thunder and Lightning podcast is free and available on demand at supertalk.fm and on your smartphone. Just search for Thunder and Lightning on iTunes, Google Play, or anywhere you listen to podcasts. Thunder and Lightning from Supertalk Mississippi, covering the Bulldogs like no one else. Hey, want to come work for the number one radio group on the coast? Kella South Media has a great opportunity for an outside sales consultant. Get paid while having fun and work in the exciting, fast-paced world of radio. We have award-winning stations like 97.9 CPR Rocks, 105.9 The Monkey, G96.7, Super Talk 103.1, and 103.5 The Possum. Take the first step towards a new and rewarding career. Submit your resume to jesse at telesouth.com. That's J-E-S-S-E at telesouth.com. Telesouth Media is an equal employment opportunity employer. Talking to the people that help make the coast such a unique place to live. This is Coast View with Ricky Matthews on Super Talk Mississippi Gulf Coast 103.1. 
Welcome back to Coast View. We're talking with Ann Petrie, who's the marketing manager for the Hancock County Chamber of Commerce, just having a terrific conversation about what makes coastal Mississippi so special. I love Bay St. Louis and Waveland and Hancock County area. I spent a lot of time over there after Katrina. And um, I mentioned to you that hurricane man, Josh Morgan, we had him on the show recently. He's from LA, but he rented a house in Bay St. Louis during the hurricane season. And I'm just thrilled that he didn't have to stay in that house <laughs> to be in the eye of a storm. And uh, so anyway, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a wonderful community. You guys are really still, even in this pandemic environment, you're still focused on leadership. Tell me about that. We are. Um, well, it's, it's definitely been a challenge, um, and pivot is the word that we use over and over. It's a word that I never used often, but now it's a part of my everyday lexicon. Um, but we've decided to pivot our leadership program. Um, when we were get, sitting down at the drawing board trying to figure out, okay, how are we going to do these sessions? How are we going to work out the logistics of visiting all these companies that we normally would? We realized that, A, it's a wait and see situation. You know, there's no way to look at what we're going to be doing next June in August of 2020. Um, and we also realized it was our 25th anniversary year of the leadership program for Hancock County. So instead of moving forward with the regularly scheduled programming, we decided to bring it back with a twist. Um, and we've devised the leadership legacy program. Um, so our 25th anniversary class, we're going to be calling back our alumni, people who have graduated from this program, over 450 people at this point, and we're going to be presenting them with a few opportunities to advance Hancock County. We're going to be kicking off with a retreat where we're going to do a full SWOT analysis for where we stand as a community, and we're going to be looking at some of the projects that we have on the table countywide that they can be a part of and help advance. So another great aspect of this program is, and we mentioned this earlier, our, we're going to be focusing on the seven habits of highly effective people, which, you know, typically one of those training sessions costs thousands and thousands of dollars. But being able to do it here locally through a local chamber of commerce can provide you with a whole lot of value and access, because frankly, some people will only have access to read the books. Right. Know? So uh, tell me about the kind of people who are involved in leadership programs. Well, it's open to anyone who is interested in learning about their community and how to become more involved. Um, I went through last year and can honestly say that it was probably one of the richest experiences that I've had on the job so far. And it's not just because, you know, you're visiting all these fascinating sites. You know, we did have an opportunity to climb one of the test stands at Stennis. We had an opportunity to have an in-depth tour of the hospital so we could really become ambassadors for the Oshner system moving into the pandemic and all the exceptional work that they do there. Um, it was making the connections with the other classmates. You know, we were able to see the community through each other's eyes as well as our own. So having that variety of lenses and perspectives and voices in the class will really shape the way you think about things and appreciate it from a different level that you might not have considered in the same yeah, way before. Yeah, diversity comes in a lot of different forms. You know, there's it racial does. diversity, there's diversity of thought, there's diversity of skill and, and careers. And, and, and the leadership programs that I've been involved in in my career, and many of them throughout my career, it, I created sort of lifelong, you know, relationships that in some cases are still alive today, you know, you know, 30, 40 years later. It's incredible how that shapes your mind and shapes relationships that you really never know how, you know, it's a small world at the end of the day, but you never know how the world's going to turn and you're going to come back and, you know, touch these people in ways you never expected to. And that happens all the time, doesn't it? It really does. You know, when we get our alumni together, we see people from the earlier classes and they still have those running jokes from when they went through together. And they just have incredible stories about how they've been able to lean on each other throughout the years. 
So if it's if you're looking to build your network and strengthen your network, it's truly something to consider. So tell me about the sales tax diversions. Tell me about that. Well, we um, it, it's not something that I it's not a world where I typically live. You know, I'm, yeah. I'm more outbound communication. I don't necessarily look at the trends as much um, because I'm I'm just not at that level. But here lately, we've been taking all of the information that we could from the state and national levels as far as trends go and sort of repackaging it in a way that's understandable and usable for our members. Um, because, you know, taking a look at trends in other areas, it'll give you an idea of where your business might be in the near future. So we were looking at the sales tax diversions and we were pleasantly surprised to see that Hancock County is actually up. Um, Diamond Head and Waveland have actually performed very strong, um, conceivably because, you know, they've got more box retail, um, people are more at home, they're not necessarily leaving the area to do the shopping. Um, Bay St. Louis was down, but we could anticipate that happening because there was also a dip in tourism, you know, it's also a big hospitality community with the number of people who have second homes who might have elected to stay in greater New Orleans area instead of coming to their weekend place. So all in all, seeing that two out of the three cities are performing well and performing strongly is definitely something that should give us hope for the rest of 2020. Um, of course, we've definitely learned that you, there's no way to know what the future holds. It could change on a dime, but um, just knowing that we're still performing well is, it, it makes me rest easier for sure. I mean, that's that's really important to hear. Um, that means that, you know, I think it's probably a number of reasons why that's happening, but people from New Orleans who are coming over to Hancock County and people in Hancock, Hancock County, you're, you're seeing, you know, activity. And, um, you know, you're finding your new normal, so to speak. Is that kind of the way you look at it? Absolutely. Absolutely. And like I said earlier, just keeping an eye on trends and research coming in from the national level, it helps us plan. It's not just for forecasting, you know, knowing no. that. Diamond Head and Waveland were up, but Bay St. Louis was down. Maybe there's something that we could do to benefit, something additional that we could offer our members in the Bay St. Louis area that could help them um, bolster their sales tax diversions. So tell me, what is an average day for Anne look like? Tell me about that. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, actually, I'm going to go back to a, a piece of advice that a dear friend who I used to work with with the city of Ocean Springs gave me. She said, don't worry about it if you have a bad day, because the next day is going to be completely different. Um, and that's true across the spectrum in the marketing and public relations worlds. A typical day for me, um, I First of all, do everything that I can to support our members and to support Tish. Um, she's a wonderful leader and it's an honor to serve alongside her. Um, but for me, I'm, I provide marketing services for the chamber as well as the partners for Stennis and Mishud and the Hancock County Community Development Foundation. Um, partners for Stennis and Mishud is sort of like an auxiliary chamber to us. It's um, uniquely for NASA at Stennis and over in New Orleans East, um, America's rocket factory and our t rocket test site, and for the suppliers and contractors associated with them. And of course, the Hancock Community Development Foundation is our um, 501c3 uh, charitable arm. And that's an umbrella organization for, right now we have 13 different funds underneath it, and they're all focused on efforts that are unique to Hancock County. Yeah, um, Tish, Tish had a history of, of working in major foundations. So when she came here, she really, had a great understanding of how to establish them, how to create you know vitality around them, how to how to raise funds for them. I mean, that's a that you know people when people think of the chamber, they don't think of it as, as having all these various dimensions as you just get exactly. finished talking about. Exactly. It, it, you're operating on a lot of different cylinders simultaneously, aren't you? Absolutely, we are. You know, we have a small staff, but a very robust 
program of work once you consider that we have those three entities that we service. No, oh, that's 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 so interesting. Uh, so I just got a note from Dr. Nicholas Conger, and um, because of the hurricane uh, situation, he's not able to actually be on the show today. He's gonna he's gonna join us in a couple of days. So, uh, Ann, would you be willing to kind of stay with us for, for one more segment? Sure. Keep the conversation. We'll, we'll come back to you in just a second. But this is uh, Ann Petrie. She's the marketing manager for the Hancock County Chamber. She's doing some pitch hitting today for Tish Williams, executive director of the Hancock Chamber, a great friend of the show, and you're doing a good job, I might add, Ann. Thank you. Um, it's always great to put the, the chamber leaders in the spotlight because they're doing such important work, especially when there's a challenge like the pandemic. So we'll be back with Ann right after this break. Listen live or on demand and watch episodes of Coast View on your laptop, desktop, or on your phone or tablet by going to supertalkmsgulfcoast.com. Be sure to go by this station's website and check out the half-off deals. Audubon Zoo tickets for just $15. That's half price. $30 zoo tickets for just $15. Again, go to this station's website or Facebook. Look for the half-off deals logo to purchase yours now. Heart attacks and strokes don't stay home. So don't avoid the ER out of anxiety. Don't die of doubt. If you have an emergency, call 911. When seconds count, the hospital is the safest place to be. Hey, I'm Steve Azar, and you never know who or what you'll hear when I spend a Mississippi Minute with my friends. Talking yeah. to Paul Thorne, Mississippi, true treasure, uh, really incredible recording artist, singer, songwriter. has been doing it a long time, doing it the right way. It's almost like a Forrest Gump thing because I, mean, I was a boxer, slash, I worked in a furniture factory, slash, I had a gig two nights a week playing my acoustic guitar in a pizza restaurant, slash, I was in the National <laughs> Guard, and, wow. uh, you know, all this stuff was going on at the same time, slash, I had a writing contract with Rick Hall and fame. In a Mississippi Minute. Be sure to check out In a Mississippi Minute with me, Steve Azar, right here on Super Talk Mississippi, the Super Talk Mississippi app, and now available on iTunes, Google Play, and Stitcher. There's a place to share gossip about the office party fun and a place to share the story you tell everyone. There's a place to share a laugh about when things went wrong and a place to share the video of you dancing to your song. There's a place to share spare change, lunch, and your time. But we could all be better at sharing how we're feeling inside. 76% of employees have struggled with at least one issue that affected their mental health. When you share, you're not alone. Feeling down? Here's your prescription for a daily dose of good news and positive vibes. Good Things with Rebecca Turner. Every afternoon, Rebecca highlights all the good things happening right here in the state you call home. Daily exposure to good things with Rebecca Turner may cause smiling, feelings of positivity, happiness, and even laughter. When you experience these symptoms, tell your friends to listen. Okay. Weekdays starting at 2 p.m. here on Super Talk Mississippi and now on Amazon Alexa devices. This is House Call for Health. There may be no greater medical mystery and no greater tragedy than sudden infant death syndrome. It used to be known as crib death. For no apparent reason, a presumably healthy sleeping baby dies. Medical experts don't have clear-cut answers to what causes sudden infant death or SIDS, but now they have two risk factors, smoking and drinking during pregnancy beyond the first three months. A new study finds that babies whose mothers drank alcohol and smoked tobacco after to the first trimester are at far greater risk of SIDS, 12 times greater. Previous studies showed a risk of smoking and drinking individually. This study says doing both drastically increases the danger. The research is sponsored by the National Institutes of Health, which is calling for greater publicity about the danger and improved screening at the very beginning of a pregnancy. For more health news, go to foxnewshealth.com. House Call for Health. I'm Lisa Brady, Fox News. You could be spreading the coronavirus without realizing you have it. So do your part and stay home. 
It's important to limit in-person interaction with anyone outside of your immediate household, but phone and video chat are safe ways to connect. It's also important to limit social gatherings. If you need essential items like food and medicine, try using a delivery service. If you must leave your house for essential items or if you want to take a walk for exercise, make sure to wear a cloth face covering. Stay at least six feet away from other people. Try not to touch frequently touched surfaces like light signals, street signs, or benches. And wash your hands with soap and water for at least 20 seconds as often as possible. This advice applies to people of any age, including teens and younger adults. It takes all of us to slow the spread of the coronavirus, so stay home unless absolutely necessary. Visit coronavirus.gov for the latest information. Whether you're a rebel, a bulldog, a golden eagle, or just a sports fan, Super Talk Mississippi has got a podcast for you. For you. Sports Talk Mississippi, The Rebel Report, Thunder and Lightning, The Super Talk Eagle Hour, and The Borky Show are all now available for you. And it's all free. Free. Get them all on demand at supertalk.fm and on your smartphone. Just search for Super Talk on iTunes, Google Play, or anywhere you listen to podcasts. What decisions are being made by state lawmakers, and how will they affect you, your family, and community? If you listen, if you listen, you'll know. Super Talk Mississippi, the Super Talk app, and at supertalk.fl. Hi, I'm Billy Kinder, host of Big Billy Kinder Outdoors. Hear the show Saturdays at 1, right here on Super Talk Mississippi. Turkeys, whitetail, Grenada Lake crappie, or Gulfport redfish. We enjoy it all, especially when you're in camp with us on Super Talk Mississippi. He's the former president and publisher of the Sun Herald, and now he's on the radio. Welcome to Coast View with Ricky Matthews on Super Talk Mississippi Gulf Coast 103.1. Welcome back to Coast View. I have Ann Petrie, and I want to thank her for agreeing to hang in there with me for a little bit. Dr. Nicholas Conger, who's going to join us in the second half of the show is backed up because the hurricane prep work and the number of patients he had to deal with. Uh, we're going to have him on in a couple of days, and he'll give us an update about what's happening at, at, at the um, at Memorial, what the numbers are looking like, um, sort of a great reminder of wearing the mask and all that. You know, and it's interesting. You look at uh, kind of where we are. One of the things we remind people of all the time is that, the tools we have today available to us to fight the COVID situation, they're all the same. Wear the mask, practice social distancing, wash your hands, don't touch your face, protect the vulnerable. And as I discussed in my conversation with Senator Joel Carter and Representative Manley Barton, do not drop your guard for a minute. One of the things that the hospital administrators tell me, and of course, I, I, we got there in our conversations with both Joel and Manley, and then Nicholas Conger really pushes this point that a lot of people catch COVID because they're being because they feel comfortable around their friends or when they come home. A lot of people catch it when they come home because, like, let's say you have five family members in a family, and one member gets a little careless today, and he comes home, and suddenly all five family members have COVID. Um, it is a it is the type of virus that will find the weak link. That's what happened with Joel Carter. Joel Carter went up to Jackson to have a conversation with seven other people to prepare for the legislative session. One of them had COVID. The seven other people at the table caught COVID in that one dinner. You know, he said it could have been as easy as passing the appetizer tray. Um, Manley Barton talked about he actually wore a mask when he was at the legislative session. But it was when he got to his office, he was sometimes wear it, sometimes not. Unfortunately, he catches it, and he ends up in ICU at Singing River. And if you missed that conversation with Joel Carter, Senator Joel Carter, or Manley uh, Barton, uh, the representative from Jackson County and George County, he has a sliver of George County that he represents as well. Um, go look at it. Go to the uh, Super Talk Facebook 103 Facebook page and watch those conversations because. Here, here are two guys who had just you know, been practicing all of these tools, but they dropped their guard for just a second. And suddenly they're both, you know, real, Joel almost ended up in the hospital and Manley ended up in ICU and it was really touch and go for him. So really tough situation. Um, 
How often do you have to remind people, Anne, to just pay attention to the basics? Every day of my life, <laughs> multiple yeah. times a day. How do you say it to them? Tell me, tell me what you say to them. Well, it is, it can be kind of a challenge, but I um, often go back to um, that my best friend is a nurse. She works in home health and she's part of the COVID response team. So, you know, she's putting herself on the line to protect people who are being released from the hospital. And she's shared many a story with me. And one of the things that she, a point that she makes really often is that every time she encounters a new patient, she learns something new. She learns something surprising. Now, I hear people comparing uh, COVID to the flu. It is definitely not the flu. First of all, we know how to treat the flu. The flu doesn't present as many surprises as COVID has. So it's the atmosphere of not knowing, which is why it's so important to be vigilant about wearing your mask, washing your hands, protecting the people around you. Yeah, the number of people who are asymptomatic, that's the thing that, you know, I, I use the word selfish. I'm not telling you you have to use that word. But when someone chooses to go into public and not wear a mask, and even though they're required to wear one when they're in, in Mississippi, it's selfish because they don't know if they're carrying or not. And the way, the, the primary way that COVID is spread is through the particles from your mouth when you're engaged in conversation with someone. Um, you know, it certainly can be other ways, but that's, that's the primary way. Um, I just wish people would continue to, Follow. I think the good news is the numbers that we've plateaued. What the doctors tell me is that the uh, the hospital admissions, et cetera, are lagging indicators like two to three weeks following. You know, people being a little bit um, less vig vigilant, but that you know most people are practicing these tools, and we've seen the numbers plateau. Hopefully, we can start to see them fall. It's important to our economy that we learn to live with this until. We have a vaccine. It's just kind of where we are. Hey, let's we'll shift gears now. So, if okay. I call you at the Bay St. Louis, uh, excuse, me, excuse me, at the Hancock County Chamber, and say I'm thinking about visiting your community, what's your pitch to me? Well, the pitch is a little bit different. Most of all, I ask people when they're considering coming and what sort of their interests are. You know, we have a very robust area that has offerings for pretty much every interest under the sun. You know, there's the beautiful waterfront, there's shopping and dining, there are cultural opportunities. We have a remarkable performing arts center, which I am sure their programming schedule is probably put on hold because of COVID, but they have just a world-class um, facility where they've hosted beautiful symphonies, beautiful performances. We've got a great local theater group. Um, so I typically ask the telling questions um, that can help me come up with sort of a bespoke visit recommendation for them. Well, that's that's cool. So yeah, I've had a I've had a number of people on, and we talk a lot about mixed use and walkable communities. And if you were gonna say, okay, what what are some of the best walkable communities on the coast? And you got to mention those, coast. and right there, <laughs> you're you're right there in the heart of it, and. Uh, you know, during this pandemic moment, people want that. They want the ability to go out there and be in the fresh air and walk around, go to Old Town, go, you know, go to the harbor, go along the beach there. Um, it's a special, special place to visit, especially now, isn't it? It is. It is. And, you know, in my career, I've pretty much made my way from one state line to the other. But I've often said that the great thing about the Gulf Coast is that all of the different communities, although I would find them comparable for the most part, each one has its own unique sort of vibe. Each one has a little bit of a different feeling, and they fit together like these great little pieces of a puzzle. So it's really something worth experiencing to visit multiple cities on one stop. I I'll, 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 See, I like the way you said that. See, I think, see, coastal Mississippi is the economic engine that drives this state. And very few people are going to argue with that. It, we are the economic. Engels on one end is a bookend. Stennis is on the other. All the travel and tourism and hospitality in between. And 
we've just got a lot going for ourselves. And um, one of the things that makes us such a special place and why we refer to it as coastal Mississippi, the region, uh, what makes it special is this collection of communities, as you just pointed out, each with their own history and culture and unique experience. I mean, it is really, that's, that's kind of the secret sauce for coastal Mississippi when someone comes here. And one of the things I tell people, I say, if you're a little bit leery about leaving Mississippi for the COVID situation, now is the perfect time to do a staycation. So if you live in Ocean Springs and you hadn't been to Bay St. Louis in a while, man, you got to go check it out and vice versa. If you're in Bay St. Louis, you got to go to Ocean Springs and check it out or downtown Biloxi or see what's happening uh, in Fishbone Alley and, and Gulfport. And I mean, I just keep talking. You know, I don't want to leave anybody out, but every community has this very special reflection of themselves that come together to create this incredibly powerful region, and um, you know we couldn't be more we we couldn't be more lucky, could we? No, we really couldn't. There's truly something to appreciate and something 100% unique about each and every city along the Gulf Coast. So um, tell me about you. You've got a unique mask program that you're doing, <laughs> and it's so. <laughs> It's kind of related to Mardi Gras and the, and the mask that everybody's wearing today. Tell me about that. Yes. So, you know, I, I saw a meme a, a few months ago. Um, it was out of New Orleans, and it said, if you tell someone from New Orleans to wear a mask, you have to be specific. And they were in a full Mardi Gras costume. It was cute. Um, <laughs> Good. So, and I have to give people credit, you know, for the most part, I do see people being diligent about wearing um, a mask. I do see people being diligent about um, sanitizing their hands and just being considerate of one another, but you still have those outliers who are not wearing their mask properly. And frankly, the threat of contracting and possibly unknowingly spreading a life-threatening illness is not enough for them. So. What are some other threats? What are their, what's their currency? What could they not stand to lose? Their good time. <laughs> they, they still want to go out and have a good time. So the message of the campaign is basically, if you don't want COVID-19 standing in between you and Mardi Gras 2021, you better wear a face mask now. So every week we're releasing a new set of graphics on our social media uh, channels um, on Hancock Chamber. And we're getting our Mardi Gras crew members to put on their full getup wearing a face mask in addition to their Mardi Gras mask. Let's do this. We're gonna, we, we have one small segment at the end. Let's, let's come back after the break. We'll finish okay. this conversation. I wanna hear about your Young Leaders Organization as well. So okay. we'll be back after this break with Ann Petrie from the Hancock County Chamber. Super Talk Mississippi Gulf Coast 103.1 on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Super Talk MS Coast 103.1. Super Talk. Nobody keeps Mississippi informed like we do. With 12 stations covering all 82 counties. If it happens in your state, we're on top of it. The news, the weather, the sports, and the talk that's important to you. The issues that matter to you, your family, and your bank account. It's all right here. And when you're away from home, depend on the Super Talk app and supertalk.fm to stay in the know. We're proud to serve our fellow Mississippians. Super Talk Mississippi. We know that we're asking Americans to do a lot right now. So we're asking everyone to be selfless for others so that we can protect those who are most susceptible to this virus. A question I often get asked is why should young people care about the spread of coronavirus? Well, we know that people with underlying medical conditions over the age of 60 are at highest risk, but they've got to get it from somebody. Social distancing is really physical separation of people it's what we refer to when we ask people to stay at least six feet apart. Not going to bars, not going to restaurants, not going to theaters where there are a lot of people. It all just means physical separation so that you have a space between you and others who might actually be infected or affect you. We all 
all have a role to play in preventing person-to-person -person spread of this disease, which can be deadly for vulnerable groups. For more information on how you can social distance, please go to coronavirus.gov. Hey, I'm Steve Azar, and you never know who or what you'll hear when I spend a Mississippi minute with my friends. We are with the fabulous Norbert Putnam as he played on so many hit records, you can't count them, and produced for some of the biggest acts ever. Uh, Norbert, Elvis. And I want to tell you about Presley. He had two different voices. He would sit and talk to me in a very calm, low voice. And we were at Stax one night, and we were having lunch. We always had lunch at midnight because he was nocturnal. We sat there, and we have our sandwiches, and at 1 o'clock, he looked up. He said, hey, Pot, come on, it's time for me to go beat up. And he stood up in a much deeper voice. He put on his macho voice. Hey, fellas, uh, it's 1 o'clock. <laughs> Let's get cracking, okay? In a Mississippi Minute. Be sure to check out In a Mississippi Minute with me, Steve Azar, right here on Super Talk Mississippi, Amazon Alexa, and now on iTunes, Google Play, and Stitcher. Anybody can be a firefighter, male, female, younger, older. We are school teachers. We are leaders in business. It's me, you, anyone that wants to be. There is no typical firefighter. Everyone knows the only thing better than pizza is free pizza. And right now, buy a $10 gift certificate to CeCe's Pizza for only $5. It's like buying a pizza and getting a pizza for free. Go to our station's website or Facebook. Look for the Half Off Deals logo to purchase this amazing deal right now. We give HPV vaccine to children at 11 or 12 years of age. I have four children, two boys and two girls, and I've given the vaccine to all of them. Get out of the house and over to Big Play today. Two massive arcades, bowling, go-karts, two mini golf courses, a two-story state-of-the-art laser tag arena, bumper cars, and right now get a $50 game card for only $25. Bucks. Visit our station's Facebook and print on demand so you can play at Big Play Entertainment Center now. These deals won't last long, so make sure you get your half-off deal. Big Play Entertainment Center, Highway 90 Biloxi. Bowl, play, eat. Go to our station's Facebook to get your half-off deal now. Talking to the people that help make the coast such a unique place to live. This is Coast View with Ricky Matthews on Super Talk Mississippi Gulf Coast 103.1. Welcome back to Coast View. I want to thank Ann Petrie for joining me today and agreeing to stay on when Dr. Nicholas Conger got hung up with patients. He'll be on in, in a couple of days. We'll have him back and we'll get into all of that. But hey, Kyle, come on in for just a second. One of the things that, that uh, we were just talking about is this collection of communities that make coastal Mississippi such a powerful region. You grew up in Long Beach, right? I did. Went uh, well, We moved here in 1976. Did all school there from pre-K all the way through high school, went to JD, went, well, I'm sorry, Gulf Coast at Harrison County, yeah. and then went to Southern Miss for three years or so. Yeah, product of Long Beach. Yeah, that's, they still live there now, right? I live in Orange Grove now. I moved up in Orange Grove in 2003, 2003. Yeah, yeah. well, you, you always talk about being from Long Beach so passionately that uh, for whatever reason, I thought you still lived there. So I, I am. I'm, I think yeah. I'm one of those that, you know, Long Beach is home. Although I've been here for, you know, 15 years plus, it, Long Beach is home. Yeah, I get So, and, um, uh, Ann, you've, you've been all over. Tell me about your path in coastal Mississippi. My path in coastal Mississippi, I'm born and raised in Gulfport, went away to school, came back, and again, just sort of made my way from one state line to the other. Um, my first job when I moved back to the area was at USM on the Gulf Coast campus. So very familiar with Long Beach and actually grew up on the west side of Gulfport. So Long Beach was where we did all the things. That was post office, bank, need to make a food run. It's Long Beach. Um, but I've worked in Ocean Springs, Pascagoula, uh, Biloxi, 
Gulfport. I've pretty much served all areas of the coast except for past Christian, which pretty much means that it's it remains on the radar. I'm coming. <laughs> <laughs> well, what a what a cool community past Christian is. I I love past Christian. Um, hey, so um, so it's just so interesting. I I grew up in Gulfport. I moved here when I was four years old from from uh, Pensacola. And, um, you know, I consider myself a native. I, I went to the Gulfport school system, you know, Southern Miss, and then, of course, um, you know, live in Biloxi today. When I, I used to fish in the fishing rodeo, you know, we didn't have a fishing rodeo this year, but I fished every year. And like five years after I moved to Biloxi, it still said Ricky Matthews from Gulfport when I would catch a fish. And my <laughs> wife, Ann, finally told me, she's a Bahanovic, she finally said, Bubba, don't you think it's time to say you're from Biloxi? <laughs> for whatever reason, it was hard for me to say that. <laughs> anyway, it's just an interesting, it's interesting how people move around and have such an interesting perspective of this place we call home. Thanks for coming in, uh, Kyle. So young professionals is a really important part of what you guys do. Tell me about that real quick in the short time we have left. Well, we have a great young professionals group. Um, it was established in 2013 and grew pretty quickly. We're 58 members strong. Um, this year has been a bit of a challenge because a lot of our programming hinged on events so that we could meet each other face to face. You know, a lot of times the younger professionals are not the ones who have the freedom of schedule to go out and attend chamber events. But um, we do have an event coming up on September 17th at the Rum Kitchen. Um, um, normally, we host a, the equivalent of a business after hours quarterly. We call it Cocktails and Connections. Well, this time we're doing it a little bit differently. We're going to be doing Coffee and Connections, and it's going to be um, a more controlled environment. It's going to be a sit-down breakfast, and we're looking at booking a speaker because um, a lot of our members have expressed that it's been really tough to try to balance it all. A lot of them have young children in schools, and we all know that the back to school time was very confusing for the best of us. Um, and just managing to balance everything between work and family. So we're looking at bringing in someone who can give us some tips and strategies for keeping it all together in an otherwise insane and unpredictable environment. Well, I mean, just another opportunity to learn. And you know, by focusing on young professionals, we are really building a, a core, a foundation for future leaders in coastal Mississippi. And you know, a lot, most of those people are already significantly successful already in their young careers, aren't they? They are, and our membership in Hancock Young Professionals really represents a wide variety of industries. You know, we've got people from the nonprofit sector, banking and finance, um, people who come in from Stennis who you wouldn't normally meet, who are more on the scientific and engineering end of the spectrum, um, small business owners too. So it's a good way to get to know some people who are going through some similar experiences to you career-wise. Well, that's that's really neat. Y'all y'all keep up the great work. Um, and I want to thank you so much for joining me today. You pinched hit for Tish Williams, and then you had to sit in for Dr. Nicholas Conger. You, you I can't actually I filled in for such prestigious people. <laughs> I'm honored. <laughs> uh, well, they'll both. They, I know Tish thinks the world of you, and uh, I know that I know that Dr. Conger was very thankful that you were able to. to Hang in there with him. We'll have Dr. Conger next. Fascinating. He is truly fascinating. Well, I like him because he is, has such a practical view toward the situation. He doesn't believe that you should turn, you can't afford to shut the economy down. People will just play their parts. We can manage our way through this. And it's just a constant reminder of a really practical view. And he's on the ground, so he knows the ravaging effects of this disease. He's always reading what the latest is, not only here but in, and in the state, but around the world. So he's just he's just a really smart guy, someone who's been a real good friend of this show, and I appreciate him joining us. Anyway, you did a great job, and we look forward to talking to you again soon. Thanks, Ricky. Okay, very thank you very much. This has been Ann Petrie, the marketing manager for the Hancock County Chamber, and we'll see you tomorrow.